Okay, this sermon's entitled The Problems with Atheism, and I've got a whole list here I'd like to, I'd like to look at, but I'd like to first open up with uh, prayer, and then with a couple of verses in the uh, book of Romans. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon and to explain what your word says. I just pray that you'll allow me to make it very clear what your word says on this subject. I have bless, bless the listeners as they, as they listen to your word. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is about atheism, and I'm going to go over some serious problems with atheism. But I'd like to go over a few verses in Romans chapter 1, where it says in verse 19, Because that they may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath shewed it unto them. Now, what, what is it talking about? If you jump back to verse 18, it's talking about the wrath of God, heaven and hell. It says, the, the, uh, the proof of this, or proof of these two eternal places, is, is, is shown to everyone. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being, underst being understood by the things that are made. Okay, that's talking about us. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, if a person's an atheist and, they, and they've never been saved, and they die in that state, they will be in hell burning forever, and they'll, they'll have no excuse. There won't be any excuse now. Not, now. Atheists are making excuses now why they don't believe. They're coming up with all these crazy reasons, and you know it defies their understanding of logic, and science, and empiricism, and rationalism, and free thinking, and all this. And they got all these weird reasons why God does not exist. But you know what? When they're, when, when, when they're dead and gone, it, they're not going to have any of these any more excuses. You know, not, It doesn't matter what you read in a Richard Dawkins book. Or, or Stephen Hawkins, or whatever, or you know, oh, Stephen Hawking. Excuse me. Or, uh, my, my point is, it doesn't really matter. These atheists are just a bunch of fools. The Bible calls them that, and that's the way it is. You say, what? Well, this is the heart. Not, you're not going to get out there. You're not going to reach anyone with this. Hey, I'm not really trying to. I'm just trying to show people um, the gospel. I'm going to put the gospel on the on the uh, the player. The Bible calls them fools. Okay. Period. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Now, let me go over some of my reasons now. now here's the, people don't like this, but that's just tough. You know, I don't like atheism, and I don't like, you know, when atheists get up there and think they know it all. So, of course, I'm not trying to win a popularity contest as, as I preach this. I'm just trying to let people know that there's, atheism has a lot of holes, a lot of holes in it, a lot of loopholes, a lot of problems, okay, a lot of loose ends. Okay, now here, here's the, here are the problems. Let me go over my, my prefatory note, Okay. It says areas where we where there are atheists, they must deal with this. I guess that's not a complete thought. These are the certain areas in 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 our thinking that needs to be dealt with. Now, pretending that such realities like the Bible, the things that the Bible talks about, heaven and hell and eternal life and salvation, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and whatever else the Bible mentions, pretending these things don't exist is not dealing with the problem. It is merely pushing such existential realities to the side, so to speak, with a wishful hope that they won't ha that these that the, the biblical truths won't have an effect on them, on the person, the atheist. And that's all they can, that's all an atheist really can do is just that they can just make they can make believe this book is not true. They can make believe this is not God's word, and that's all they really can do. The truth is every human being must must face a holy God who won't tolerate sin, but he's a, who but, but who has already made a way for us to be forgiven, saved, and justified. It's through Jesus Christ, faith in Christ. Now, atheists will not go unpunished on Judgment Day. Here are a list of the, the realities each, each atheist must deal with. Now, I'm going to give you the list you know, in, in numerical order. Number one, sin. Everybody sins. The Bible's clear on this. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, the Bible is still being preached. It's still being believed. And the, the fact of that is... A proof that Christianity is true, because if Christianity were not true, then we would have figured it out by now. So let's turn to First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, and look at verse twenty-four. This backs my point up. And see, Christianity has always been around, by the way. These, these atheists will say, "No, it hasn't," and they'll say anything they can say to try to discredit and disprove the veracity and the authenticity of Christianity. They'll do anything they can to try to attack uh, the Christian, the, the foundation of our faith. They'll, they'll do anything. And it's all lies. It's all Satan concocted lies. And that's who the atheist uh, worships, Satan, whether they realize it or not. Well, there are verses to prove that. But the Bible says in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But in Luke verse 25, 
but the word of the Lord, that's the Bible, endureth forever. Why do you think it's still here? Why do you think Christians still believe it? Okay, it's because it's the Bible has already declared that. It's already prophetically declared that. Okay, the Lord, the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Okay, the reason I'm preaching this sermon is because the Bible tells me to. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to dis, disprove atheism because atheism is a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of poppycock that's going to send a person to hell. That's all it is, nonsense. Okay, number three, prayers are in fact answered. Okay, I'm thinking back to the day that I prayed for $50 on the ground. I prayed for $50 on the ground one day. I found it the same day. I found two 20s, a 10, a 5, two ones, and eight quarters in a black bag. Hey, you tell me that's not, you tell me that's a coincidence. I'll tell you to your face you're crazy. I prayed for $50 and I got the $50. That's an answer to prayer. And you can believe that or not. I've got witnesses on this. It doesn't, so it doesn't matter. An atheist is going to say, yeah, you're just making it up or, or what a coincidence. Hey, it's not a coincidence if, if it's if there's exactitude in, in the whole in the equation. Fifty dollars, and that's how much I found exactly. Okay, number four. That's just that's just one little you know t that's happened three times by the way they, because of prayer. I, I'm not bragging. Hey, hey, you should if you're gonna brag about something, brag about God answering your prayers because that it lends credibility to the faith. Okay, it, to a to an unbeliever, to a skeptic, to a doubter, to an an atheist or an agnostic, it should. It should convince them that what they're believing is garbage, but you know a lot of these atheists are so de are so deep seated, they're so dyed in the wool, they're so you know deeply entrenched in their in their in their beliefs or in their unbeliefs rather because they don't believe in God. They're so deep in, in they're so profound and so like it's just ridiculous. It's inveterate is the word I'm looking for. They're so inveterate in their beliefs that they're not going to change their mind. That's why it takes a tragedy, believe it or not, to get a person to wake up. Number four, atheists don't know, nor can they prove, that there either is, is or isn't an afterlife. They are basing their beliefs on what they think, want, or hope is real. Okay? That's what they're basing it on. You know, wishful thinking. You know, I, they, here's the reason people are atheists. They don't want there to be, they don't want there to be a God. It's not that they don't have, it's not that they, that they don't have evidence. It's, they don't want the, the, the God of the Bible to be their God. They may want some other God to be their, to be God, but they don't want the God of this book, the Bible, to be their God. And the Bible makes it clear that there is a God. That's, that's the reason. I've heard some atheists say they want to believe. Hey, well, you know what? Then just believe. Have faith in God, the Bible says. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and thou shalt be saved. Believe. God will save you at, at that moment and you're, you're guaranteed to go to heaven. Put your faith on Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose again. Believe on him. So I don't, I don't buy into this nonsense. I want to believe, but I just can't. No, you, you can believe. Okay, anyone can believe. Number five, they have no real purpose in life. An atheist has no purpose. Christians do have purpose. Now, this is a matter of, of subjectivity rather than objectivity because I'm, I'm telling you what I do as a Christian, what other Christians do is purposeful. Evangelism, prayer, praise and worship, loving one another, telling people the good news, reading your Bible, going to church. It's a purpose in life. Letting God answer your prayers, letting God provide for you. It gives me a sense of purpose and a sense of hope. All an atheist has in his mind is, edu is education. He's got his, he's got his mind. Oh, no, the, the, the Videla set should be all an atheist has, V-I-Z, and then it should be, and then I'm giving you the list. Mind, education, sin, pleasure, worldly things, and of course there are lots of other things you know, with relativity to these things. But that's really all an atheist has. Think about it. The most educated atheist. They may have a, an IQ of 165 or, you know, they may, they may have a PhD in all sorts of different, you know, academic and scientific fields. And, you know, in the end, they have nothing. They're, they have no hope, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. It says they have no hope. They, were, they are without hope. You know, enemies of, of God, estranged. No hope. I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. But see, they may have they may have their mind and their education. They may have their pet sin. They may have their 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 pleasures, their worldly things, their materialism. They may have all that stuff. But you know what? They're not even guaranteed to live. Turn to James chapter four. They're not even guaranteed tomorrow. Nobody's guaranteed another day. All these tragedies are taking place. All these calamities, you know, natural disasters. Nobody's guaranteed another five minutes. So all the all the materialism in the world is not going to profit you anything if you die and go to hell. The Bible says, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Your treasures of wickedness, you atheist out there, it's meaningless. Okay, the Bible makes that clear. Now look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. 
it says in verse 14, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? He's asking the question, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The Bible says life is, is short. Compared to eternity, this is, compared to eternity, life is, it's like fugacious. It's over with. You know? It's like a, a, a life, this life on earth is going to be like a twinkling of an eye compared to eternity. Number seven, atheists are just, now this is for the most part, I don't want to call every atheist this, but most of them are this way. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of, uh, generalizing here. Most atheists are just prideful jerks who slander the very God they claim they don't believe in. So deep down, they do believe in God, but they hate Him, and they remain lost and on their way to hell. And it's really kind of ironic how they, 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 they mischaracterize God, and they try to pull verses out of the Old Testament to make God look like a tyrannical despot who wants to just smite everyone and, and send everyone to hell, and they make Him out to be a murderer when they fail to see His love in, in, the, in the simple verse of John 3.16. The whole point of God, the whole point of being a Christian is, now here's the thing, is not to, it's, the whole point of being a Christian is not to prove the existence of God, it's to be loved by God. Now let me go back into my notes. I've noticed that atheists want to demand that Christians prove God's existence. But that is not the point of being a Christian. The point is to have a relationship with God, being children of God, having all your sins washed, and for, washed away by the blood, and, and being forgiven by all, of all your sins. Galatians 3, 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Let me go ahead and turn there. i got some verses lined up here. The whole point of being a Christian is to, to know you're going to heaven and to serve God and to love God and to love others and to be forgiven. And to, you know, it's the whole point. It's to have a relationship with God. The atheists are so backwards, they don't even know what they're talking about. You just, they just, all they think of Christianity, most of them anyway, is that we need to prove the existence. It's not the point. It's like saying, I want some girl to go out with me or something. Do I want her to just, you know, acknowledge that I exist? No, that's not my point. You know, the point is to have a relationship with the person. Same with God. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to the cross 2,000 years ago at Calvary to die for the sins of the whole world. He did this so that He could have a, have a relationship with us. We, we're, we're sinners. He's the Savior. Ephesians chapter 4. Let me go ahead and show you some verses on this. And the atheists have missed the point. They've missed the boat. And it's really sad to die as an atheist and then go to hell. And they, they don't believe in hell. And whether you believe in it or not does not change the reality that, it, that it's real. Okay, I don't, I, you know, who cares if you don't believe in hell? It's real. You're going to find out one day that it's real. Ephesians chapter 4. Where am I, where am I going here? Ephesians 4, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Believers. God, for Christ's sake, hath, already done, forgiven you. Now turn to 1 John chapter 1. See, an atheist has a problem. They're, st they're still a sinner. And they're still going to answer to God. For, they're still going to give an account on Judgment Day. And that's a real scary thing. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to, fa to fall into the hands of the living God. They need, the atheists are the ones that need to be afraid. They say, well, you're just trying to scare us with all your dogma, religious dogma. and, you're, and it's, it's, Everything they say is just it's becoming bromidic. It's becoming platitudinous. It's becoming trite. It's, it's all just a bunch of rehashed garbage. It, it's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing original about anything they say. It's all the same demonic trash is all it is, lingo. It's all it is, every last bit of it. Why don't they, they, they can't even come up with anything new. You're a religionist. You're just dogmatic. You're just fundamental. You're a fundamentalist. But yeah, you're just on your way to hell, period, unless you get saved. Atheists can be saved. I know lots of atheists that have gotten saved. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Who's the us referring to? Saved people. Christians. Believers. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. Okay? That's the good news of the Bible. They're, re they're rejecting the good news. See, eternal life is a free gift. It's free. It doesn't cost us anything. It was already paid for. And atheists want to reject that? It doesn't even make sense. Yeah, that's why I believe in hell. So that's why I'm so, you know, have a, such a strong belief in a literal hell. It's because it, there, there's no other place a person could go if, if they would reject the free gift of eternal life. The Bible says eternal life is free. It's free because Christ paid for it. Christ paid it all. Okay, so conclusion. Atheists have nothing. 
are still condemned and can't even come up with anything original and are, listen to this, they're fighting against the real God that loves them in the name of some straw man nonsense the devil has engendered. They are so stuck on just believing in God's existence and the so-called absurdity therein when in reality they need Jesus Christ and God's grace, otherwise they will burn in hell for all eternity. That is the way it is, period. So atheists have got a serious problem. You know, they're gonna, they, they can sit there all day long trying to disprove everything I've said or trying to disprove the Bible, trying to disprove the fact that there's a heaven and hell, trying to disprove the fact that there's judgment day, but all this stuff still, you know, all these things, heaven and hell, judgment day, God, all that, you're going to have his wrath poured out on you. All this stuff is, 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 is reality. It's going to happen. What, I mean, you can, you can laugh it up all you want and try to come up with all these different philosophical reasons why none of this can make sense or none of this does make sense. It's all going to happen. And that's the way it is. And they're, they're saying, I know people are thinking, why, why is it going to happen? Because the Bible says so? That's right. The Bible says so. The whole point of the Bible is to tell us how to be saved and then to tell us how to live for God and to serve God. The whole, that's the whole point. Now, a lot of atheists are thinking you've got to work your way to heaven. I've heard a lot of them say that. They think Christians are, are going to heaven because we worship God and we bow down and placate God and we're just like giving him homage. And all. No, that's not how you get to heaven. Salvation's by an act of God's free grace. That is, that we receive this free grace, this gift of eternal life, by believing in Jesus Christ for it. That, that's as simple as that. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, you either believe that or you don't. You either believe on Christ or you don't. The atheists don't, and I guess they think, I don't know what they think. They, they're so great for not believing it. They want to call it a bunch of nonsense and a bunch of fairy tales. And Hey, no, it's just reality. It's just, it's just bleak, hardcore reality. It's the truth. God's word is the truth any way you slice it. And I even I shouldn't even say that because you don't want to slice God's word. You don't want to take portions of God's word and and, and neglect the rest of the, the Bible. But my point is the Bible is very clear. But God commended His love toward us. That's everyone. In in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. There's no salvation in any any, any other religion. There's no salvation in any other, you know, world world view. There's no salvation in, in atheism. There's salvation only in Jesus Christ, and that's it. Okay. Now the last verse tells us the whole point of the, the whole point. You know, this is really the, the whole Bible. This is the point of it. Really, if you really get down to it, this is it. For if when we were enemies, that's that's referring to the atheist. Atheists are enemies of God. For for, for if when we were enemies. We were reconciled to God, now look at this, by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The point of life, the point of the Bible, is really to be reconciled to God. You, you get reconciled to God by faith alone in Christ alone. And then you're saved forever. If you're still an atheist after, after listening to this, you, you, you're insane. Because this is all... Good news. Now, they may think the fact that there's a hell is not good news. You know what? There is a hell. The fact of the matter is you're still on your way there if you don't get saved. And you can hate that all you want, but that's the very place you're going to if you don't get saved. <clears throat> and that's what the Bible teaches, and that's what I'm saying right now in this sermon. So there are serious problems with atheism. And how do they deal with these problems? How do they deal with all these things? How do they deal with the fact that they're going to die someday? Just ignore it. Pretend like it's not going to happen. You know, no, I, I don't even understand. It makes no sense. Atheism doesn't even make sense. It makes no sense because everyone's going to die. That's reality. What are you going to do? Where are you going when you die? And atheists would say nowhere. Well, I'd like for you to prove that. You know, I, you're, you're right. I admit I can't prove. I can't prove that every, all this is true. That's why we have to have faith. I have faith the Bible is true. I have faith in, that there's a heaven and a hell. I have faith in everything I've preached here. You know what? I can't. I can't necessarily prove it with, with some type of evidential modality. I can't necessarily do that. Or, or means is probably the better word. But you know what? I can believe it. But you know what? Atheist, you can't prove that you, you can't prove we go nowhere. You can prove that. There's no proof. Anyway, it's all I have. The Bible's clear. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Those that have not done that and have never believed on him are still lost and they, they're still condemned.
The Bible's clear on that. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because they have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. It's not even because of their, of their sins. It's because of their unbelief. So that's all I have. Let me close in prayer, and then we're off. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon and to just write your prayer to allow people to see that the reality that they're, that they're denying or trying to push aside and, 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 and hide from, basically, that you'll wake, up, wake people up and show them the truth of the gospel. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>